And on behalf of Wells Fargo, we're just so excited to have you on for today's conversation. You know, from a perspective of what we're doing from a community, we want to remind you uh, that Wells Fargo has been a longtime advocate of higher education and supporting students along their respective higher education journeys. If you look back over the last 10, 11 years or so, you can note that our firm has provided over $97 million of financial support for higher education programming. So great events like these, but also for scholarships to help students along their academic journey. So all of those things are happening uh, as a result of Wells Fargo's commitment to helping each of you all as students and, and scholars and celebrating you along that academic journey where, you, where we need to. So good things there. And also see on the bottom of the page, some of the work that's been done amidst the pandemic, you know, making sure that we're providing specific financial support to help students at those most critical times to stay in school. We never wanna have anything come up financially that prevents you from being able to continue your academic journey. So special thanks uh, for allowing us to provide those dollars to you all uh, along those areas. I think our next slide here is actually going to be uh, a bit of a handoff. I get to bring on another trusted partner of ours in Betsy burton Strunk, great partner and leader within TMCF. So Betsy, we've got a great, great group of folks here with us. I want to give you a moment to say hello to the band and then we'll continue the conversation today. Well, thanks so much, Dewey. I appreciate it. And I love the music that we're playing together. So anyways, thanks everybody for joining this call today. Um, Thurgood Marshall College Fund is really delighted to host the Beyond College series. And hopefully we'll see each and every one of you every month during these calls. But Thurgood Marshall College Fund is celebrating its 35th year of, of being around. As an organization, we provide scholarships, internship programs, we provide immersive experiences as well as other opportunities for students that attend HBCUs and predominantly black institutions with experiential opportunities to really be able to compete in the workforce, whether it's through entrepreneur or entrepreneurial activities or just really learning more about leadership opportunities, Third and Marshall College Fund wants to be there every step of the way. So you can see those, those uh, notes, but the most important thing to recognize with Third and Marshall College Fund is knowing that we put students first. And as you'll see on the next slide, the, the mission of Thurgood Marshall College Fund, as you can read along with me, is to ensure student success by promoting educational excellence, both what you're all getting at your institutions, as well as preparing the next generation of workforce talent through our leadership development programs and the programs that we have with our partners, like the ones that you're seeing here today. So I hope that you get everything out of it. You should link in with every person that you hear from today, because as we talk about mentors and sponsors, everybody here is out for and eager for you to be successful and we're here to help you. So take advantage of those opportunities. So thank you for being here today and for paying attention. And I am gonna turn it back so that we can keep the songs moving. <laughs> Betsy, thanks a million. And congratulations again to you and the entire TMCF team for all of the great things that you're doing. And also have, having an opportunity to partner with our firm relative to the Beyond College Webinar Series here for 2022, now in its eighth year, so we're pretty excited there. So listen, team, here's our runner program for today, and we'll have a broader agenda that the team will cover off in just a couple of minutes, but just wanted to touch on, hey, listen, we've had an opportunity to do the Wells Fargo and, and TMCF introductions from, from that perspective. We've gotten our recording reminder kind of taken care of. I always love the by the numbers piece, and you guys have done it again. We have, as of kickoff, 152 folks that are registered here for today. So really, really good information there from that perspective. We've got high schoolers all with us today. So high schoolers, special thanks to you for, for joining us. We've also got our top colleges. You know, we love to do the roll call here. So I think it may almost be an HBCU sweep between our friends out at Bowie State, UDC, North Carolina, a and and then also uh, CUNY York. So great, great connectivity there across those wonderful institutions. So huge shout out to all of those schools for referring students to today's discussion. And we're really, really appreciative of it. From a from our referral pers perspective, we've got our highest 
referral source today was Wells Fargo employees. So Wells Fargo employees are actually the ones that are sharing this information the most with scholars, colleges and universities of respective students came in second place here with things. Certainly there in those top three and five, we have Point Foundation with a good number of students today, the Hispanic Scholarship Fund. And of course, you know, it's Thurgood Marshall's call, y'all. So, you know, they had to, had to set the market here relative to the wonderful schools that are participating. So that just gives you a sense of the numbers. And we love to share those shout outs to kind of get things moving here. You know, some Zoom etiquette, just some reminders for you. Only our presenters are the ones that really need to have their video enabled during, during the sessions with things. Don't forget to keep yourself muted. Use that best Zoom etiquette. Make sure that we're, we're having to, making sure we have a wonderful call. For optimizing viewing, go ahead and select speaker view. That'll actually allow you to bring the speaker directly in. You have the ability to kind of customize that by clicking, I think, on the little ellipsy there or clicking on the view portion there at the top of the screen. Uh, and you also have the ability to hide any of the non video participants by again hitting the ellipsy there and making the adjustment from that perspective. So you all are masters at using Zoom now, uh, digital natives as we like to call you. So you guys know how, know how Zoom operates. You know, what to expect from today. We're gonna have a broad conversation around mentors and sponsors. You're gonna get insight, you're gonna get direction on pieces that are gonna be very, very helpful for you. Whether you have a mentor today or whether you're looking for one or whether you think someone may be sponsoring you or you're looking for a sponsor, you're gonna have ways to get that great information. Please do not forget, Q&A is critical for us. We probably see, receive somewhere between 25 and maybe 40 questions from you all. We're gonna unpack some of those during the Q&A portion, but the Q&A and our polling in the chat box, they're open for business, y'all. You can drop items into the chat, you can shout out, you can share comments, you can uh, kind of second the emotion of some of the things that maybe you hear throughout the broadcast. So please utilize the chat, use, utilize the Q&A feature throughout today's broadcast to make it really interactive. When we get to the end of the call, we'll give you some reminders around additional webinar content that's coming up. We'll also remind you uh, about a great survey that we have that's available for you to get connected in. Hey, get social with us. Go ahead and get a screen grab of the content of something that one of our partners is sharing. Use that hashtag WFC Beyond College. Go ahead and use the hashtag for TMCF as well. And let's get trending here and get lots more folks engaged in Beyond College. Hey, my last item here before we pivot over to the real stars of the broadcast, I'm gonna encourage everyone that's on today to scan the QR code. Go ahead and grab your device. Either grab a screen grab here or scan this QR code. This is a very compelling piece from the economics group within our firm, spotlighting the economic resilience and progress in the black and African-American community. Great, great piece. Our buddy Charlie Daughtry and his team actually put this together. You can find Charlie on, on LinkedIn and kind of shout him out as well. But this is actually a comprehensive overview of the economic impact that African Americans are having on our nation. I would encourage everyone, everyone that's on today to take a look at this study and then certainly give us feedback and your thoughts about it. As you know, it's Black History Month here, and this is a really great time to spotlight the economic impact that African-Americans are having on our nation. So really, really important pieces there. All right, I've covered off all of, all of the top items here. We now need to get down to the nitty gritty, I think is the way that they used to say. That's what my pops used to say. So we're gonna get down to that and get in with our amazing presenters. And we've actually got three amazing leaders all with us today from our firm with years and years and years of experience and things that they want to be able to lend to you today. So I'm excited as we jump to the next slides here, you'll see some content information for a great partner of ours, uh, Iwana K. Brady. We'll also be uh, hearing uh, from Udana Iko Okora, uh, who will be introducing himself in just a moment. And last but not least, uh, a great partner of ours in Algenia Terrell. And so I'm actually going to jump back if we can to Iwana K slide for, Iwana, for a moment. Iwana K, thank you for joining us from the, the nation's capital today. I want to give you an opportunity to introduce you, introduce you better get yourself to, to the folks today, and then we'll let you hand it on to the remaining panelists. Iwana K, the floor yeah, is yours, friend. <laughs> thank you, Dewey. I'm excited to hear about Bowie State representing Strong on the line. Um, of course, they knew, that's they knew you were here. That's, that's, your, that's your stopping <laughs> ground. So what can we say? 
So um, just good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Iwana K. Brady, as Dewey mentioned. I have a unique role here at Wells Fargo. My role was created specifically to address housing disparities. Um, I lead the African-American segment strategy for Wells Fargo Home Lending. I'm responsible for creating and implementing strategy and support of addressing the racial disparity in health and home ownership that we face as a nation. Um, essentially, I look to uncover segment insights. I research areas of opportunities to engage deeper and advance home, home ownership for African-American borrowers. Um, I've been in the mortgage business for almost 20 years. I am a graduate of The Ohio State University, uh, a proud member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, and most importantly, I am a mama to an amazing five-year-old. Um, I am happy to share insights from my personal career journey. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you today, and I look forward to this discussion. So thank you for having me, and I will turn things over to Udana. Thank you, Ewunike. Hello, everyone. My name is Udona Ekekoro. I'm a senior lead strategy and planning consultant in the external engagement teams within diverse segments, representation, and inclusion group of Wells Fargo. Um, I've been with Wells Fargo for 16 years, and in my current role, um, I lead the development and implementation of the strategic operational framework for our group and also oversee the development of our internal business processes. Uh, prior to Wells Fargo, I worked for Accenture and also with Merrill Lynch. Um, I have a Bachelor of Engineering degree in Electronics and Computer Engineering from the Federal University of Technology in Nigeria. And um, I hold a Master's in Telecommunications from the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Um, I'm located in St. Louis, Missouri with my wife and family. Um, I have a daughter who is a senior um, at Bernard College in Columbia University in New York, and a son that is a junior in high school. And I have twin boys that are in eighth grade. So that's all about me. I'll hand over to our next panelist, um, Arginia, for her introduction. Thank you so much, yeah. Udana. Hello, everyone. My name is Arginia Terrell. And I am lead digital pro product manager within the Strategic Digital and Innovations Group. I've been with Wells Fargo for 15 years in various capacities, such as strategic planning, technology and operations program management, and then risk management. However, I am most proud to say that during my tenure with the firm, I have been a diversity champion, training leader and mentor focused on making a difference in the lives of our team members. I am married to a wonderful husband whom I always jokingly tell um, he's the lucky one, but I am the lucky one as well. And we are proud parents to uh, two children. One has graduated and off on her own. And then I have a senior that is graduating this year. So uh, let's get started with our program. I will now hand it back to Udana, who will lead us into our program. Thanks, uh, Jeanette. Uh, these are the topics that we're going to be covering today. Uh, in our webinar, we'll cover the... Um, Sorry, yeah, these are the topics we're going to be covering today. Uh, we'll look at the differences between a sponsor and a mentor, reimagining our development, um, look at ways to setting up ourselves for success, um, look at the spectrum of relationship, maximizing mentor-sponsor relationships, uh, look at ways of engaging our mentors and also how we can attract sponsors. And finally, we'll take a look at the law of connection. Um, next slide. So here we have a polling question. And that question is, who has a mentor or sponsor now or has leveraged one in the past? I'll pause here. I think you see a prompt. Okay. There should be a prompt. Okay. Okay. 
interesting responses. So I see that we have several folks here who've had experiences with sponsors and mentors. Um, that's that's great. That's a great response. Thanks you ever thank you everyone. Uh, we'll move to the next slide. Okay. So this slide is an excellent paraphrasing of the 10th law of connection from one of my favorite authors, John Maxwell. And it says, when you attract, when you attract with people, the heart must come before the head. Um, whether you are the sponsor, the sponsee, the mentor, or the mentee. So that's great, great um, quotes on the, from the law of connection. And that's a great segue to our next slide that touches on mentors versus sponsors. Um, now, both mentors and sponsors, for those of you who already have experiences with them, are very important people that can really help us in our career and indeed our lives. Um, a, a mentor, in my view, encourages us and supports us, gives us career advice, and they generally do this out of the kindness of their heart. Um, a sponsor supports you, but in a different way. They are willing to spend sometimes their political capital to help advance your career, but they also, um, but they also benefit from you as they help, as you also help expand their sphere of influence. So finding a mentor is generally, uh, generally speaking, a mentor is easier to develop, a mentoring relationship is easier to develop than that of a sponsor. Um, because a sponsor in most cases, or in all cases, need to have visibility to the kind of work you do. Um, the table here kind of highlights a few additional differences between the two relationships. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, mentor may or may not know the mentee and the sponsor generally knows the person and not only knows them, but also is familiar with the kind of work they do. Um, and, and as they, we look through the bottom of the slide, you see a, sometimes a mentoring partnership, a partnership can start off as a mentor and gradually progresses into a sponsor relationship, especially as your mentor starts to see some of the work you do. Um, so that's, we'll move on to the next slide. Well, Donna, that was a great overview of uh, the comparison between a mentor and a sponsorship. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, while I have you though, can you share instances where you have had a mentor or a sponsor during your career? That's an excellent question, Virginia. Um, I've actually had several mentors and sponsors over the course of my career, but most recently, um, I have um, one that some of the people here may be familiar with. Her name is Gigi Dixon. I had briefly worked in a working group for our CEO with her um, about two years ago. And, and after that, she was able to um, talk, talk to our, the CEO of my division on my behalf and ended up landing me in the role that I'm playing today. So. Um, so she is the most recent sponsor that I have, but I also have several other mentors that have helped guide me throughout my career. Thanks. That's excellent. I too share some of the same similar experiences. And these are the reasons why I am such a fan of mentoring relationships. Well, let me say to our audience members, I am just very excited that you all are all here with us today to allow us to share some mentoring best practices, some tips and tools for growing you and developing your career, and then helping you design ways in which to maximize your mentoring relationships. Let's segue into our next section, re, re, reimagining your development with a polling question. I'm sorry, can we skip back to the last slide? Yes. So can everyone provide a response to the question, what is the most important part of your growth and development? And we'll take a moment for everyone to respond and then uh, we will recap.
All right, we'll give it maybe a, about 10 more seconds. Excellent. So uh, I see that most people have selected experiences as the most important part of your growth and development, but there are also a lot of folks that believe that relationships and feedback are vital to your growth and development. Uh, let's segue into our next slide, please. So here we have a, sort of a model that, while it's not prescriptive, it depicts similar breakdowns with the main point being that experience is the best teacher. And experiential learning comes from doing, not just knowing. But what we want to focus on here is that the goal really is to blend the three. While you're focusing on your experiences, your coursework and your training and, and the relationships that you have with your advocates, you should leverage those to help continually improve your performance and even achieve your career goals. All right, let's move on to our next slide, please. So now let's talk a moment about how, how you can set yourself up for success and think about some tips and tools that will lead you towards success in your career. So our first item here says, know your why. You, you, it's so important that you understand why you are engaging in a mentoring and a sponsor, sponsoring relationship and that you establish expectations and goals for that relationship so that all of the parties involved are clear on the intended outcomes. I always tell my mentees, you know, it's so important when you are engaging in a mentoring relationship to know what you're bringing to the table as well as what your ask is of your mentor. And then most importantly, with our second item here, investigate or clarify the following success criteria. It is so vital that you know who you are and what makes you successful. Know what you bring to the table. You need to understand your brand and what achievements you have attained in your career that will continue to move the, the needle on your growth in your career. Um, by knowing these success criteria, you can then develop a career and life plan so that you can articulate this information to your mentor and your sponsor so that they're better able to help you. Let's move to our next slide, please. So folks, I've had the pleasure and been blessed in my career to be able to mentor many team members um, throughout my time with the firm and with previous companies. And I'll tell you that career planning is always the foundation of our many discussions. You'll see depicted on the screen here is an illustrative example of a career life plans, life cycle plan, excuse me. And these are just high level planning steps that will help you plot your career and life pathway. As you'll see, it begins with you developing your career plan and then continually conducting a career and skills assessment and then moving forward into adding your experiences and ways in which you can foster more experience through stretch assignments and other uh, job embellishing opportunities. And then ways in which you can improve your visibility because even for our college students and our high school students that are on the phone, it's not too early for you to develop a LinkedIn profile if you have credible experience to promote. The sooner you can begin developing and polishing your brand and getting more visibility, 
the more opportunities you will have. So I encourage you to look at this and begin to develop your career and life plan. Let's move to the next slide, please. So this slide says, manage the direction you want your career to take. So folks, again, for those of you that are in college, it's never too early to start thinking about this. If you're not sure what your career uh, goals are at this point, because several of us have changed careers three, four times. But if you can begin to use a tool like this to plot out various career profiles, you'll be able to then assess how you move from an individual contributor level up to a director level, and then how you can continue to monitor your experience and your competencies against positions that are higher in your field. All right, so let, let's move to our next slide, please. So we've talked about now uh, our, the importance of having a career plan, and we've talked about um, what you would use it for, but what does it look like? Well, the slide that we have on the screen actually depicts a strategic career and life plan. And the importance is that you understand the things that you want to achieve it, it personally, as well as the things that you want to achieve professionally. And this actually gives you a black and white picture of who am I? It also helps you to assess where do I have gaps in my career experience and skills to get to the job or career that I want. It also helps you to understand, you know what, if I want to be married by 28, I actually need to find somebody probably by 27. So it's helping you to be clear about who you are, what you bring to the table, and where you want to go. And this becomes the talking document that you use with your mentor and your sponsor. Um, I'll, I'll provide you with a quote here that our, one of our leaders says, you know, oftentimes our career isn't a ladder. We always hear about moving up the ladder. Well, sometimes it's a climbing wall. Oftentimes you're going to move sideways to move up, or you're going to look at other careers that you take to come back to a job you want just because you need that skills embellishment. So think about mapping your life out in some type of strategic career and life plan because everyone, regardless of your level or position in life, needs to have a plan. Plan your work and work your plan. I'll leave you with this. Make sure your journey is purposeful and not just another stop on the train. I'll turn it over now to Ioana Kay, who is going to take us through the rest of our program. Thank you so much, Eugenia. But before you go, I want to ask you, um, can you share an example of your why and um, when you were seeking a mentor or a sponsor? Oh, absolutely. It was early in my career and being a young female in corporate America, there weren't many people that looked like me. And I sought out a lady that was pretty high even though she was uh, mid-senior, she was high in the, in the company and well-respected. And I began to ask her questions about her trajectory, the things that she did to continue to move the needle on her career, how she enhanced her brand. Um, and she left me with... Uh, I, I never will forget, she told me, always be cognizant of your pie. Understand your performance and your image and make sure 
that you are getting the proper exposure. That has never left me. And it's become a big part of how I actually do the marketing piece uh, of my strategic career plan. So it was very valuable advice. And uh, to this day, I still stay in contact with this mentor. Oh, that's Thank you great. for asking. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that example. And um, a lot of times it's, you know, finding that common ground that you have with someone that can help you build Absolutely. that relationship. And it's such a key point that you can share that you still have that relationship. Um, and, yes. and that's that's something that as we kind of talk about, and we're going to go through this spectrum of, you know, relationship-based career growth, that it, it's important. Your mentors and sponsors become part of um, your personal brand, and um, I like to look at it as like your your advisory group. So, um, you know, you all may hear buzz phrases like networking is key. Um, another good one is your network is your net worth. That one always kind of stuck with me, but both of these are great things, which are true. Um, I have full transparency. So, you know, Dewey always kind of promotes that full transparency. So I've, I've only interviewed for one job um, and it was an internship. And every position I've held thereafter has been because of my network. I mean, certainly you go through the interview process and, and it's upon you to be able to secure your position, but it's because I, you know, I had to learn the how and why piece to make my network valuable. And it's always afforded me opportunities to um, go into my next space or my next chapter in my career. And it's been really impactful. I also had to do what was authentic to me. Um, you know, we might have questions today and we can certainly talk about it. You know, how do you network? I was not good at it. I'm a very much an introvert. So I had to do what was authentic to myself. Um, and so as you hear insights today, you know, take from it what resonates with you and what feels authentic to you. And that's really where you're gonna find your true value and, and how you network and how you approach your own career path. So I love this idea of networking across the spectrum because everyone won't fill your cup the same. And so some folks are kind of merely industry level um, contacts and that's okay. I mean, that's what they're there for. You're networking, you're understanding um, the roles that you're playing, you're, you're getting information across your industry and you're staying connected. Um, and you wanna get to know the players in your field of interest. And that's essentially what's gonna be that, that baseline of networking. And then others are there to provide you with an opportunity to glean and learn from them. You're going to lean into their experiences and their expertise. You're going to grow your own acumen, your own understanding. And for me, this one is key because you're always going to want to stay hungry. You're going to want to learn. Um, if the pandemic has taught any of us anything, it's that the acceleration in which any industry can turn on a dime can happen at a moment's notice. So you want to stay current. You want to stay invested in learning your craft. Um, you want to hone your skills, you know, this is really critical and you want to align with folks that can, that you can learn from and that have an interest in learning from you. Um, one thing you'll hear me say a lot is that these relationships need to be reciprocal. Um, as much as that you're asking for folks to give to you, there's certain value that you add to this relationship. Um, you know, every year I identify an area that I have no knowledge that it's for myself to make sure that I'm always engaging in learning. And, you know, internally we call these stretch goals, um, but I connect with my immediate leadership and I align myself with opportunities to learn in that space. And so I ask for support to open doors um, for me to sit at those tables um, that I normally would not have access of or even awareness about. And so I think it's really important that you engage in those conversations and insert yourself in spaces um, so that you can have an opportunity to learn and grow. And so that kind of brings me to this notion of coaching. And I've been very fortunate that every role I've had, um, my management has acted in that coaching capacity. And that may not always be the case, but it's, it's been a blessing that I've had the opportunity uh, that's been afforded to me. And coaches is exactly what it is. They're there to guide you um, they allow you to fail. Failure is okay. You know, that's one of those learning tools that you figure out what works and what doesn't work. They support you. They're going to challenge your success. They're going to challenge your process. They're going to challenge your intentions. And you want that. You want someone that's going to 
identify roadblocks and, and areas where you may have, need to have strength or kind of being, bring in some supports to get to where you're trying to go. And so here, this is where you're gonna start to discover spaces where people take a vested interest in you and your success. And it starts to become an extension of who your mentors and your coaches and your sponsors are. And that's what you want. You want someone that's invested in your success, that's gonna be invested in, in how you're going to excel in the work that you're doing. Um, coaches can evolve, evolve into mentors. Um, most mentors you're uncovered through, through different avenues. Um, it may be a family friend, it might be through industry engagements. Some are happenstance, um, you know, they're not always these best laid plans, but you certainly, you can learn from anyone. So um, be encouraged that every position, um, I believe, Algenia, you, you know, you spoke about, you know, you don't always have to go up the ladder and that when you're in your environment, sometimes you have to take a, a, a move that's horizontal versus vertical, just so you can get that exposure. That's the same thing with mentors. You don't always want to seek out the highest person in your organization. It may be somebody that you work closely with in another line of business. Um, so you, you really want to um, be thoughtful when you're entering into a, a mentor and sponsor space. Um, you're going to build a personal relationship um, and it's, it's going to be built on trust and, and you want to make sure that you're reciprocating that and that you're valuing that relationship. And keep in mind, mentors and sponsors, they're excited to engage with you. You know, you're, you, I know when I've secured a mentor, I'm like, wow, oh, I can't believe this person actually, you know, wanted to mentor me or I'm now their mentee. But at the same time, there's a sense of pride in being able to pour into someone else and bring them along within their career journey and see them succeed. Um, so you want to look to, um, engage across your organization. Um, you're ultimately building this kind of advisory committee for yourself. Um, you want folks that you can bounce ideas off of. You wanna do this in a space that's in confidence, um, folks that'll have discretion on your behalf. You wanna lean on people who know your goals and your values. So um, the, the chart that um, Algenia had showed you earlier, that's certainly helpful. I didn't have those tools and resources when I started off in my career. So it's great to see that there, there's tools out here that you can leverage and use to your advantage. Um, there's so many conversations that happen when you're not in the room that you need advocates who can vouch for you and speak on your behalf. And that's, that's a lot of what comes out of being able to lean on your networks and, and your sponsors and your coaches that you kind of have built up in your sphere of influence. So I spent a lot of time here because it's important to be able to know how people fit into your plan and where to spend your energy based on the outcomes that you want for your own career. And so we can kind of move ahead. And so when we talk about a roadmap, you know, and then the next two slides are going to kind of go hand in hand. And the first one really is going to outline the how. So know your audience. Um, definitely do your homework. Uh, when I worked at Women's Wear Daily before joining Wells Fargo, um, I actually worked in the fashion and entertainment industry, and we had big events like the Golden Globes and or LA Fashion Week. And my job as an intern was to make networking books, essentially is what they were. They were literal books that I had to uh, put the image of the guest, uh, what they were known for, who their publicist was, any connections um, that the attending editor would need to know um, when they had conversations with a guest. And my sole job was to make sure to study them. And if the meet and greets that needed to happen happened at some of those events. And so this is kind of an extreme example, but it holds true to this day. You know, I still research attendees when I go to conferences. I look to see what connections or like interests we might have. If we're on similar board affiliations, um, I, I'm a member of a Black Greek sorority. So it, it, do we have something that we can connect on? if we're able to meet and engage at, at events. And so it's important to understand their sphere of influence. Um, you wanna ask questions. You wanna make sure that um, you find out, you know, how do you like to, how do they like to receive information? Is it text message? Is it a phone call? Do they want an email? There's just different opportunities where you can um, really lean into the folks that they engage with to understand more about your mentors or sponsors 
and make sure that's a relationship that you want to engage in. Um, you might find out things that it doesn't benefit where you're trying to go in your, in your career path, and that's okay. And to have those conversations. And that comes down to when you're communicating that ask and you go in to have some of these meetings, you may find out that this might not be the person that can help you, um, that can help you achieve your goals but they may know somebody that can understanding what you're trying to accomplish. So it's important to have very transparent conversations when you're talking about the things that you're looking for. Um, if we can move forward. And so when you get into that space of having mentors and sponsors, you know, it is important to have that plan. And um, you wanna look at things that you can really leverage. And so this acrostic that's on the screen is a great um, opportunity. This is one of those moments, like if you, if you had this in paper, you could dog ear it or screenshot it like Dewey was saying earlier. But this is an opportunity to, to really kind of drive back, you know, what is my sweet spot? You know, where are the skills? Where are the things that I need from the organization? And where does that meet where I have a passion? And just to give you an example, I work in home lending. I work in mortgages. For the first 15 years, I worked on the secondary side of the house. This is essentially where you as a homeowner um, want to buy a want to buy a home, you get a mortgage. A mortgage company might sell it to an entity like Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo will then package it and sell it on, on Wall Street. That's a very simplified version of it, but that's that's the process. There's not a lot of room for you know creativity. I was interested, I'm very passionate and interested about marketing. And those two things don't necessarily align. So for me, I would seek out mentors in that marketing space, but I knew that I needed to be in a sales role to understand the challenges that our customers and our consumers had, and I needed to learn. So I went into a role knowing that I could understand the products and programs so that eventually one day, if I transitioned into marketing, I could understand what those challenges are and I could be an effective marketer for that space. And these are conversations that when you have mentors and sponsors can help you align your, your career path so that you're able to be successful in the spaces that you're trying to go into. And so as we move ahead, some other things to consider is you know, your progression. You know, what are the things that interest you? Ask questions, ask a bunch of questions and, and be honest, Mentors and sponsors are going to, the first thing they're going to ask you is, what do you want to get out of this? And so you need to come prepared. You need to understand the things that drive you, that motivate you, that where your interests lie. You want to make sure that you're finding out about them. Again, I'll re keep repeating this. It's reciprocal. You want to make sure that you're building these relationships. Um, Algenia mentioned earlier that she still talks to um, mentors that she, she gained early on in her career. It, you never know um, at what point folks can continue to pour into your trajectory and where you're going in your career path. And you just want to make sure that you're able to um, stay engaged. Um, your follow-up with mentors is extremely important. You want to make sure that you're thanking them for their time. You're following up on, you know, if, if one of the goals was to get a certain job, you want to make sure to let them know if you were able to acquire that role or that position. You wanna kind of close that loop and make sure that they're staying, um, you're communicating with them openly and clearly and staying engaged. And then you wanna have joint goals. So one of those things that they can help you along the path, you wanna lean on people. You know, you're not gonna be able to do everything on your own. And, and one thing I've learned early is that if you're transparent and you let people know what you're trying to do, more often than not, you'll find more folks that wanna help you get to where you're going then, then hinder you in that process. And so if we can move forward, just a few words of wisdom again to outline, um, you know, you certainly wanna contribute to this relationship. Understand that you have value, you bring that to the table. You wanna own your success. Um, you know, a lot of times people shy away from talking about the things that um, make them who they are, that made them successful, that got them to where they're going. And it's not in a boastful or bragging way, but there are things that you should be proud of as far as your accomplishments and your mentors can help you be an advocate. They can help you craft your, your story, your own personal brand, because that's really what it is. When you're working in a company, how you show up every day and the relationships that you have start to build your own personal brand. 
And you want mentors and sponsors that can advocate on your behalf, especially when you're not in those rooms or they're having those conversations about you. Um, be respectful of their time and yours. It's, it's, it's the adult added the oldest adage as far as like, you know, do unto others as, as you'd like done unto you. You know, time is, is very valuable and important. Um, so you want to make sure that you're respectful of that, you know, setting your goals, working towards, you know, fulfilling them. And, and again, um, I'll just kind of wrap things up with understanding that you're walking in your authentic self. Bring wholly who you are and what you're trying to accomplish and being transparent. And folks will certainly buy into supporting what you're trying to do. And I mean, the best part about this is have fun. You know, this is building your, your life journey, your career. You spend hours upon hours with folks in, in a work environment. And you wanna make sure that you're enjoying the work that you do and that you feel fulfilled. And being able to have these honest conversations with mentors and sponsors are really gonna help you be able to position yourself to really leverage and, and find joy in the work that you're doing. So I'll pause here for a poll on self-reflection. And we're just gonna ask the question, am I very clear about how a mentor sponsor can support me in achieving my goals? And so your options here are strongly disagree, disagree, agree, or strongly agree. And as you're taking a minute to answer that, if you're, if you're not being clear, you know, this is a great time to use some of the tools and resources that have been outlined here to help kind of craft your story and craft your journey and where you'd like to go to be able to, to be more clear. So here's a few resources that you can lean into. Um, discover your strengths, strength finders. These are a lot of great resources that can do a little bit of introspection on yourself and figure out some spaces where you have strengths and areas that you might wanna, might wanna grow um, and learn in those spaces. And then we'll move forward. And I'll turn things back over to David. Wow, there was so much there of packed information and gems. I know one of the things that I heard today that will, I will keep with me is everyone won't fill your cup the same. I will take that with me going forward. Now, everyone who's been on the call, I know you've gained as much of this information as I have. And now, just for our panelists, we have questions from our um, audience that I'd like to ask. First, I want to ask, how can I build genuine connections with mentors in a virtual setting? And what about during the internship? I'll throw that first question to Udana. Udana, I think you're on mute. Sorry about that. Thanks, David, for that question. I am um, the um, it's a very interesting question. It kind of ties some, somewhat to what Ewunike shared about uh, part of, of um, uh, uh, um, the, the fact that she does seek out stretch assignments, right? So even in when, when um, as a result of COVID, we spend our time, we find ourselves working a whole lot in this virtual environment, but you can also, in those environments, participate in projects that are part of your stretch assignments. So what I typically do is if, if I'm participating in, a, in, in an effort that's a stretch assignment for me, I, um, I identify, I, once I get assigned to it, I spend time to identify those within that forum, whether it's a working group that's, that are familiar, have done that work before. And, and, um, and after a couple of meetings where they've gotten to know me, I reach out to them and ask them, you know, can you, will you be interested or will you be willing to uh, mentor me uh, in this area? And then you develop very good relationship. I'm, I heard that works well for me, even in a virtual environment, which is how we've been operating for the first two years now is, um, it's because because they get to see what you are doing in the forum, they can give you real time feedback, very very valuable feedback, and you can ask them candid questions 
related to the work and they can give you answers and responses or thoughts or suggestions that you can apply again. And the next time you go back to them, you can also get another feedback on how that panned out. So it's um, that's a technical approach that has worked well with me and, I, and um, it's worked even in, a virtual, in the virtual environment we operate in. And I encourage you um, to try that out. Thanks. Thank you, Donna. That's an excellent answer. Um, I also want to bring forward, according to researchers, there are five types of mentors. How do you ensure that you selected the right people and ensure that they're aware of their mentoring role and type? And I know that we covered this earlier about you know, making sure that they're aligned, but how do you know what you should be looking for? Uh, Genia, I'll throw that to you. My apologies, I couldn't get off mute. Boy, what a, what a great question. First of all, it's important to talk about your synergies and to understand your personality type, your career experiences, just the many commonalities that you may have with a mentor, but also some of the things that you find as opportunities. Um, if you know that there's someone that is extremely organized and you're not, find someone that is both digitally and from a physical paper and life kind of uh, scenario, very organized. And someone that will help you learn how to structure yourself. Um, again, I for me, I use strength finders because the first thing when I meet someone that is in a professional relationship, um, if we do coffee or tea, I'll ask, you know, tell me about your strength finders or um, tell me some of the things that, you know, are your hobbies. Uh, I seek to find areas of commonality where we can have both types of conversation. But then I also seek to find ways in which I can help improve this person. Um, I think I'm a, a pretty good diversity uh, SME. And oftentimes I've had relationships with other mentors that were not as skilled in, or as learned in the diversity uh, dimensions and develop relationships that way. So um, I'll say, use those tools. And then also as you're building relationships, I think some of them will organically evolve. Wow. That, yeah, organic is always the way to go, right? If we're developing relationships. I really want to bring it back to, you know, Wells Fargo as our presenting partner here. Does Wells Fargo have a page um, where you can find a mentor within the company or even outside the company? Uh, Ms. Brady, I'll throw that to you. That's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure if, if they do. Maybe uh, that's something Dewey and I can have as a takeaway. Um, not necessarily, but I will tell you as a culture with Wells Fargo, it is not something that you struggle to find a mentor or a sponsor in this organization. It, it is a very open door policy. Uh, and in fact, I will tell you, there's been more instances where I've expressed an interest in something and I, you know, just random conversation and a leader will reach out and put time on my calendar because they're interested in knowing more about you know, my interest or what I'm trying to pursue. And, and that's been um, something that has been encouraging working in, in an organization as big as Wells Fargo that, that people take such an interest in the people that work here and the team members. And, and that's, been, um, that, that's been great. And it's, it's a culture, it's part of the culture that's here. If I can mm -hmm. piggyback on what, Iwana could just uh, mention. So there are some groups within the company. I know SDI has an actual mentorship uh, committee and uh, mentors have been pulled in to uh, work in there. 
actually, I believe, I'm pretty sure there is a mentoring ERN here because we're using sort of their playbook for our mentoring committee. So um, not sure how uh, you go about um, looking for that in Teamworks, but certainly, you know, just a, a quick search would pull in some of that information. But if anyone is interested, you know, once they're in Wells Fargo with our group, uh, certainly I can provide them information about our DEI mentoring program here. Yeah, I'll tell you, this is Dewey. I just want to piggyback on your piggyback of, of we want to cave there. Here's the real action item team, right? So if you've identified a leader today, or you've read about a leader in the Wall Street Journal, or you've seen a leader on CNBC, they're probably on LinkedIn, right? If you're interested and you gain something from them, inbox them. Hey, XYZ, it was great to see you on, on Squawk Box today talking about you know, this area of finance. I'd love to get 15 minutes on your calendar. Follow that same protocol if you see them in the, again, the post, the journal, whatever it is, follow those same steps and that can actually give you an opportunity to make that connection. You all will be surprised at the number of people that will respond to your message if you email them. That's Please true. note, if you do not email them, they shan't respond because they can't. That's, I'm doing the Instagram guy. Y'all know him? The yeah. Instagram dude. That's what happens if you send an email. <laughs> so, so some tactical pieces there, David, to kind of close the loop on that one. <laughs> All right, absolutely. So I, I keep hearing this common theme today of strengths, and we've all talked about strength finders and different resources about finding our strengths. But Another part of that is self-awareness. So how can someone identify their strengths um, without over-highlighting their weaknesses? I really wanna hear everyone's perspective from today's panel. So I guess I'll jump in. Um, I, we have a new leader in Wells Fargo. Her name's Chrissy Furco. She's the first African woman, American woman to lead home lending. And I love, uh, when she first came on board, she shared about, um, a mentor that had her ask, you know, what are the things like the five things that people would describe you <clears throat> before you walk into a room? Like what would, what happens when you walk into the room? What's the presence that you bring with you? And then also, you know, to have people describe you and, you know, ask your friends, your family, the folks that are around you the most. And, you know, you've always, you might've heard that, you know, the, the people you spend the most time with, it's kind of like what's influencing you, but that's a great time to just get that introspection and really to, to see from someone else's eyes other than your own, what those comments are. And it's, it's interesting and eye-opening. Um, you know, I think individually we know things that we like, but we definitely don't necessarily know that those are our strengths. And so it's, it's nice to get that input and that feedback. We call that 360 here at Wells, you know, where other people can, can kind of opine and talk about what your strengths are, what they see as a strength in you. And so it's, it's interesting to get other people's perspectives. Okay. Udana, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, um, I, I, I agree with Eunike regarding seeking other people's perspective, because sometimes the way we come across is not to other people, it's not necessarily the way we think we're coming across. Um, so, but but um, if you have access to it, uh, you're in a in a school or organization that have access to it. Take take the personality profile test, and that gives you some of them are really really good. At Wells Fargo, we have what we call the Strengths Finder test that we use. Most of the groups use that a lot and that can give you a good insight into your personality type what your key strengths are um in terms of weaknesses i mean if most of us know what our weaknesses are you know so um so that's relatively easy to to find um but but again it's always good to especially if you're having um, a mentoring relationship with if you're a mentee to someone in those um relationship always make sure you are candid not just about your strength but also your weaknesses so that way they your mentor will know how or what suggestions that they can they can make to you to help address um, the weaknesses okay i think you're still on mute 
I am so sorry. Yes, I am. My apologies. It, oh, Donna, I totally agree with what you just said. And, and I think Strength Bond is, is probably one of the best ways to assess what your true strengths and skills are, uh, just core. But then also doing sort of a skills assessment of where you may have strengths that aren't bucketed on strength finders. Um, for example, you know, I am big on planning events. Um, it came out to some extent in my strength finders, but I know that is something that at my core makes me happy. That's part of why I am a program manager. Um, I think there are also other uh, avenues in which you can learn what your strengths are. And that's in looking at how, when you do your performance appraisals, evaluate, when you do that evaluation, be honest with yourself and understand the things that you really need to bone up on so that your weaknesses become clear to you in every job or in every um, life event so that you really become determined to change and improve upon those things. Now, I guess the, the point that you made about without over highlighting our weaknesses, I don't think you can over highlight a weakness when you're being honest with yourself. Now, if I'm sharing with my mentor, of course, I'm not going to go in with a laundry list of things because I don't want to give them the wrong impression about myself. But I encourage people, be candid and honest with yourself about the things that you really need to change. And even those things that you um, discuss with your mentor, be open to their feedback. Oftentimes when people are candid with us and tell us, who we really are, we don't want to believe them. That is a phrase that I heard many years ago. Um, when people show you who they are, believe them. Well, when people tell you, you, tell you who you are, believe them. At least give it a chance and embrace it. Don't uh, deal with it from an emotional perspective. Um, Take time to digest it and figure out how you can change or at least influence those things so that they become a positive. Awesome, fantastic advice. I would just shift gears just a little bit. Uh, we talk about mentors like within our companies, reaching out, but what if you've had a great mentor and you know, you've left that company, you just, you've disconnected. How do you go about reconnecting with that mentor, especially if you don't, if you no longer work there? You call. <laughs> you I'm sorry, what was that? I said it, call them? Yeah, give them a call. <laughs> and, and people get it. Life happens, you know, you transition, you move on, time passes and, and it's okay, you know, acknowledge, hey, I haven't talked to you in a long time or, you know, it's been a long, it's been a while and um, I just want to catch up, you know, just be it. That's when that authentic, authenticity comes into play, you know, be honest and, and, you know, people are willing to help and they understand that, you know, you're going to change roles and you're going to move on from the, from the company. And um, as long as it's a relationship that you both value, they'll, they'll show up. That, I mean, that's a great response, Evonike. What, what I'll add to it also is that we, we're fortunate that in this day and age, we have tools like LinkedIn. So I encourage everyone, um, if you don't already have one, try to set up a LinkedIn profile. And not only set up a LinkedIn profile, for those people who you work with at your job that who are your mentors, your, your sponsors, make sure you connect with them through LinkedIn. So that way, if you transition off and move, move on to a different job, uh, you still have a way in case you lose your contacts, which does happen sometimes. Sometimes all your contacts may be in a computer system that is owned by the organization you're working, working for. And when you transition and return that, you can lose a lot of those contacts, but then you still have LinkedIn and just sending, sending them a quick note. If you're in town, very close to them, say, oh, 
when are you available? Let's have lunch. And you can reconnect that way with them. So that's a, that's a, that's a way I could I would suggest you approach it. Okay. So also after that that connection has happened, how do you, we talk, we talk about um, mentorship and sponsorship? And we know that it, you, the panel has done an excellent job today about differentiating between the two, but approaching asking about will you be my mentor versus being my sponsor how is that approach different Ajay, i'll take I, that one david yeah, absolutely wow so as a mentor or someone asking to be i'm sorry as a mentee or someone asking to be sponsored it's very important that you understand what that person is capable of so People that can oftentimes mentor you may not be in a position to sponsor you. And someone that is able to sponsor you typically will have more of a relationship with you so that they feel comfortable recommending you and so that they're, go they're willing to go out on a limb for you and stake their reputation on a, a recommendation for you. Now, I, and I want to stress this here to our, our uh, students that are on the line, because many of you, as you begin your careers, um, no one's gonna coach you on how you should engage with your mentors and your sponsors. So bottom line, remember that when you're reaching out to these folks, you are to do the hard work. It's not for them to get you a job. It's not for them to reach out on your behalf unless they offer to do so. Be cognizant of what your accountability is in that relationship and what you can or should expect from them in those roles. Awesome, fantastic, fantastic advice. And I thank you for that. Final question for the panel uh, for the Q&A session. is going to be, how do you, excuse me. It's okay, here we go. I've lost my train of thought for a second. So as we're fostering relationships and fostering uh, mentorships, how do we move on from the mentor? How do we decide that this relationship has ended its path, uh, has ended its you know rope, and we're going to go on to someone else? Uh, what? How does that work? What? Uh, how would you approach that conversation? That's a good one. I think um, some of the tools that were outlined here. So if you have a plan and you're pretty transparent with the person that you're working with from a mentor relationship, you know, reaching your end goal. Is, is a great way to kind of um, close out that chapter. And um, you'll hear, you know, people are in your life for a reason and a season kind of a, a sentiment. And that happens in, in all aspects, whether it's business, personal. Um, you know, if it's a, if it's a relationship that's um, not really mutually beneficial or um, supporting the direction that you're needing to go, <clears throat> you can certainly be um, transparent about that. And, you know, some of it's just asking the questions, you know, you could ask, you know, is this meeting, um, you know, what we set out to do? Is this um, getting us towards an objective? Do you find this a great use of your time? And um, being able to have that conversation at, candidly and respectfully, right? You wanna make sure that, you know, you're, you're keeping relationships intact, but certainly saying that, you know, this, this may be a point that I need to focus in some other areas um, as I kind of reevaluate, you know, my goals and objectives. You know, I appreciate the time that you've given me thus far. You know, it, it's, I hope that we can continue this relationship and you can kind of gracefully bow out of, of um, you know, having a, a mentor or a sponsor that just um, doesn't align with where you're trying to go. Well, I just want to personally thank each and every one of you for your insight during this question and answer session, and not just this question and answer session, but all of it. And I'm going to throw it back over to Dewey, but I really want to just say thank you. Hey, David, thanks a lot. 
a lot of great commentary there. And, and scholars, let me thank you all for the questions that you all submitted. Again, you never disappoint. So thank you for submitting those questions. And I want to add to this as we're going to transition to closing thoughts from our panelists here in a moment. If there's something that you did not get an opportunity to bring up here, maybe this was not the right setting to be able to do it, please inbox us, inbox the team. Know that those things in, come in in a confidential kind of a manner and they'll be addressed accordingly. But then also put to use some of the things that you've received today. If, if some of these tools are now in your utility belt or in your toolkit, let us know how they work. I think our panelists will be very interested in knowing kind of how you've been able to execute in these in these given areas. So David, salutes to you, man. And another masterful facilitation there of the, of the Q&A portion of things. Okay. Panelists, we're gonna head over to closing thoughts. Uh, and uh, Wadike, we wanna start with you. Give our scholars 90 seconds or less homework, something that they need to take away as action items here for the day. So I guess um, something that was given to me that was useful, practice. Practice networking, practice engaging, practice talking to people that you're not familiar with or comfortable with. Um, start to hone in on your, your why and um, just start, right? And once you start building your network, it gets easier. It's going to change as you go through it, but it, it becomes more natural the more you, you try it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Iwana K. Brady. Let's uh, pivot over to Udana. Udana, same thing here, man. Give them something that they need all need to hold on to, something not to forget, man. Give it to them. Sorry, it took me a while to come off of mute. Uh, but <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not always easy when you start off, it, when you leave college or leave school and start off a new job to have to know who to approach for being a mentor. Um, but I'll encourage you all, if you end up in an organization that has an employee network, like in Wells Fargo, we have a black employee network, enroll in those networks. Um, I've enrolled in, in, my, um, in my prior job, the employee network actually offers a mentoring program where you have a whole list of black leaders within the organization who sign up and said, I'm available to mentor. And then you have a list of mentees who sign up and say, I'm looking for a mentor. And the employee network helps connect you to that. So I will encourage every one of you to participate in your employee network. It's one of the easiest ways to identify people that can mentor you as you move into, um, as you start off a new career. Thank you. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, that's Sudana Eko Okora. When he speaks, people listen. You can tell he's the baddest dressed man in the Zoom, by the way, too. He borrowed, like, look at this, look at this. What, you can't beat, you can't beat that gear. You can't beat, Algenia, how do you dare try to follow up with, with that one? But give us your tactical takeaways. Give, give us something to hold on to, friend, please. And you're right, Dewey, both you and <laughs> Udana showed up in uh, just wonderful form with your dashikis, great garb. So I think I've shared some of the nuggets that I wanna leave our team members with. Yeah. Um, one of the most important things is as you embark upon a relationship with a mentor, make sure that you are building a relationship of trust so that you can be truly candid. Um, early in my career, I'll tell you, I remember the mentor that I'm telling you about, uh, I'm sorry, that I spoke of earlier. I remember going to her and saying, you know, um, I just don't know how to start my speech. And as a young professional here, I had an MBA and, you know, I'm, I, all this education and yet I don't know how to start my speech and it was funny because she just kind of smiled and said Algenia tell them what you're gonna tell them and then tell them <laughs> and as simple as that sounds 
it was so profound. And I tell you, I don't think I could have admitted that um, point of weakness and point of uh, lack of confidence in my speaking ability at the time had I not trusted her. So make sure that you are really building a relationship of trust so that you can be candid with your mentors. And then also do the work. Make sure that you come to the table planned so that your mentor understands your goals and um, your life aspirations. It's important that they see a two-dimensional person, not just a one-dimensional person because there's more to you than just Wells Fargo or the job that you take. Be very clear on what your goals are in both and they can help you. And then lastly, um, teach your mentor something. Don't come to the table with empty hands. There are things that even you as students have had experiences in where your mentor may not have had those experiences. Um, diversity experiences, all of that is important for this to be a relationship where both the mentor and the mentee grow from it. So um, I just encourage you to not uh, be timid about seeking out mentors, go for it and you'll find that more people will embrace you than will say no. Good luck. That's Algenia Terrell, team. You've got her LinkedIn information here as well and you heard it directly from the source. Come to the table with clean hands, A, and then B, with something in your hands that you can bring to those kinds of conversations with things. So stop laughing at me, out here. All right, team. Uh, again, let's make those connections. we got a little game running here. We want to see who gets the most LinkedIn requests. I never win. Real talk. So I know one of the three of the, of the ladies going to win. I'm, I'm, I got my money on Udana today. Again, pr primarily because of that fly gear he's got on. So, all right, let, let me get back to it. Hey, there's a couple of reminders, team. We've got a couple of folks ask about the, the playback with things for today. We're going to touch on that. But before we do to that, I, I do want everyone to jump to this next slide, please. Take a moment and go to our online survey. This is number two of 12 webinars that we're going to be doing this year in partnership with our friends at TMCF. But we need your feedback. Please take a minute, scan the QR code that's there. Give us your feedback. Tell us the things that you especially enjoyed about today's presentation and also the spots where we need to make additional adjustments in areas. We will be taking a look at that feedback. So please take a couple of minutes, share that information with us. Do want to spotlight again the remainder of the series. You're a part of Beyond College here. The next slide will actually give you a few more details uh, about the content here and, and some of the opportunities that are coming up. We've already got our first item on demand. I actually dropped that into the chat just a little bit earlier. So you can jump out to the TMCF YouTube channel and you're going to see just our first webinar for the year. But eventually, as each of the webinars gets posted, I think you'll have access to all of them. So mentors and sponsors, you know, we're five minutes away from finishing everything with that here for the day. And then when we get into March, we're going to be right back with you in the early portion of March for a great discussion around resume writing and interviewing skills. Our buddy Ruth Armandadis and partners from our recruiting side of the firm are going to be facilitating those dialogues. Always really good ones to participate in. When we get to April, we'll be spending a little bit of time talking about money management. And certainly as we jump into May, have some discussions around managing student debt, a topic that we know is really, really important. When we get to June, salary versus value, this is just going to give you a sense of, hey, how do I compare job offers? I've got an offer on the West Coast. I've got an offer in the Northeast. Hey, I've got an offer in the South, wherever. You know, What is it like to work in Texas versus working in Miami? Come and, and, and get some resources that are going to help you make decisions on which firms you need to be joining and which roles ultimately you should be selecting. Careers and internships, I talk about this every time. I want, to break, I want to set the market team. We had over a thousand scholars register for that session last year. I'd love to see, see us get above that threshold, but it's going to be a great opportunity for you to hear firsthand about all the career opportunities that are available within the institution. August, leadership brand, kind of an extension of some of the things that you've heard here today. We'll be unpacking those pieces during that discussion in August. Path to graduate school. This is another one of our popular ones every year where we bring in a panelist, whether it's folks that have law school experience or MBA recruiters or in other kinds of areas 
to actually spotlight what you need to be doing to get prepared for your graduate school journey. Whether you're thinking about a full-time program or whether you're thinking about a part-time program, uh, it's a great, great session to be involved in. In October, we're going to unbox credit, credit matters that matter during Get Smart About Credit Month. So come join us in October, and then we'll wind the year up with one of my favorite sessions always uh, around social media smarts and kind of uh, today's digital world for all of you digital natives that are out there. Don't forget, you can access other content from us. We've got a great partnership happening with partners in our corporate investment bank. We would encourage everyone to go back and grab the playback for our A Day in the Life session featuring our, featuring our buddy Wale Cuxum, great founder and CEO of MochaFi. So for any MochaFi fans that are out there, go ahead and get a screen grab on this one. Team, please remember, you've got to use utilize that passcode as well. So when you scan the QR, it'll take you to the page, but you have to enter that password there on the screen as well. Please note, use all of the characters there and please use the special character and keep that in all caps. But a great, great session there available on demand. And again, same thing, share that session with others that you think may benefit from it as well. Last two slides here, just a reminder, team. now is the time to go ahead and build that profile, profile or build a profile on our university programs page. Get connected into the talent community. Lots of great information that that, that team shares about career opportunities and even other opportunities to kind of meet and greet Wells Fargo leaders. So please get connected to the talent community and share that information with other classmates, with folks in the fraternity or in the sorority or on the sports team or in the band or in the gospel choir that couldn't join today. Share that information with them so they can take advantage of it. There at the top are buddies at tuition, for, tuition funding sources. Huge shout out to Richard and his team for all the great information. They're one of the groups that sends out information about our webinars. Occasionally, you'll get emails from me around these as well, but just special thanks to, to the team there at TFS for the great work that they're doing. Go ahead and set up a profile out there to learn more about other scholarship opportunities. Certainly, to any of our military personnel that are on, thank you so much, A, for your service to our nation. Uh, anyone that's maybe a retired military person as well that's joining us today, make sure you get connection, connected in with a buddy, Sean Passmore, and the team within our military recruiting Group. You see their email address here, please feel free to engage with them to learn about recruiting opportunities and additional resources that can be available for you there. And as we mentioned a little bit earlier, Beyond College, the series is going to continue to roll on between now and November. So you've got lots of good information from there. With that said, I want to begin letting you guys out of here a couple of minutes early today, which I'm sure nobody will be complaining about. But I want to thank Iwanake. I want to thank Udana. Of course, I want to thank Algenia. I want to thank David and Betsy and the entire team at TMCF. Jeremy's somewhere in the background, kind of, kind of running slides. And I see Dr. Hart is on with us today. So TMCF team, thank you all so, so much for your engagement. But we also have another partner who is behind the scenes today in Angel Haven. And so Angel, we want to give you a huge shout out. Thank you for all of your great work with getting this event set up in such a great way. You all will be seeing and hearing more from Angel in the, in the days ahead relative to all of these great pieces. My closing thought will just be to thank everyone again for the time today. Please have a great rest of your week. Continue to stay safe. Let's stay focused on the academic things that we need to get completed between now and you know midterms that may be coming up here fairly soon. And then ultimately, as we're getting into the end of the semester, uh, Take the information that you received today, team, and share it with others. Again, use that hashtag WFC Beyond College to share the information with others. If you especially enjoyed, enjoyed something that was shared today, pass it along to someone else to benefit them as well. Everybody stay safe. Look forward to seeing you on March the 3rd for our discussion on resume writing. Thanks a million, everybody. Have a great evening. Till next time, take care.